What am I doing? I'm listening to swaps on every single pool on Uniswap V3. If you want to monitor swaps on every single pool on Uniswap V3, then this video is for you. Warning, it's a lot of pools, but as usual, we can do it with just a few lines of code. Let's go. I'm Blockman, and I teach DeFi developers how to use Uniswap V3 with code. If you want to learn how to do everything with swaps and liquidity on Uniswap V3 with code, sign up for my Uniswap V3 Masterclass. Link in the description. Now let's monitor some swaps. I'm going to walk you through every step of programmatically getting all the pools on Uniswap V3 and then listening for swaps on each of them. We're going to be using Ethers.js to read from the blockchain, so import that. And I'm using Ethers 6 here. The syntax will be slightly different if you're using version 5 or an earlier version. Here, I've pasted in the V3 pool ABI for swap events. The events we'll be listening for. That is broadcast from a pool when a swap occurs. I've also pasted in the ERC20 token ABI for the decimals function. Because we'll need to look up the number of decimals used by each token on each pool because this affects how we convert the square root price x96 into a human readable price. But we'll get to that in a moment. Now we set up a provider. And listen up, this is important. Depending on the service you are using to read from the blockchain, Infura, Alchemy, or whatever, monitoring every pool can use up your request quota really quickly. So I have code to use providers for both Infura and Alchemy. I like Infura because there is no per second rate limit, but Alchemy gives you way more monthly requests, I think like 300 million on the free plan, and I'll show you how to avoid the rate limit issue with Alchemy later in this video. Now we have a few helper functions. This build pagination takes the total number of pools on Uniswap and creates an array of offsets, which will work like pagination when getting pool addresses, because the subgraph only can return 1,000 pools per request. This next function converts the square root price x96, how Uniswap pools store the current price, into a human readable price, like what you would see on the Uniswap app. High level, we unsquare root the input, we shift the number 2 192 bits to the left, then we take the ratio of those two variables, and shift the result based on the number of decimals in each token, and possibly take the inverse of that depending on which token is first and which is second on the pool. That leaves you with the value you would see in the Uniswap app. This function tells the code to sleep for as many milliseconds as you pass in. It's not necessary if you're using Infura, but it is if you're using Alchemy. We'll use this to avoid hitting the rate limit and getting errors. Here I've defined some constants, which allow setting the number of pools per request to return from the subgraph. So we have the number of pools to return per request, and then the max number of pools that will return across our requests. The subgraph will throw an error if you try to request pools beyond the 6,000th pool, but 6,000 should really be enough to get you started. If you'd like to know how to get even more than that, I can do another video. Let me know in the comments. Now to our main function. We import Axios, and you should probably put this at the top of the file, but it doesn't matter and set the URL for the Uniswap v3 subgraph. Then write a query to get the total count of pools deployed with the Uniswap v3 mainnet factory. And this is the factory address that's on mainnet right here. Then we'll make that query with Axios and parse the results to get the count of pools. Then log the total number of pools. Now generate an array of offsets that we'll use for pagination. And we'll do this with our build pagination function. Log the result of that, 
And now we're going to loop on those offsets. And you can think of offsets like using offset in SQL. And for each of these offsets, build a query to get data about pools from the subgraph. In this query, where we interpolate 1000 in place of per page, and the offset for the value of skip, we'll get the first 1000 pools starting from the offset. And for those pools, we'll get ID, liquidity, token 0, and token 1, and the ID and symbol for both of those tokens. Then we'll make that request and parse the result so this returns an array of pools. Here we call promise.all and pass that variable with the requests in it so that we wait here until all the requests are complete. And because each request returned an array, pool datas is now an array with a nested array for each response we got back inside it. We'll need to flatten this. And we can do that with flat. So flatten does something like this. And converts that into this. So that it's simple for us to loop over the results. Now we'll pass that data to our add listeners function. And this function adds the listeners to each pool. Here we loop through each of the pools one by one. And in a try catch, we first get the symbol for each token on the pool. Then we'll initialize a pool contract for the pool. And we'll use this in a minute. Then we'll initialize the token contract for each token in the pool. And I use the ERC20 event API for every token. Then get the number of decimals on each token. And as an optimization, you could put the data for each token into a hash map and retrieve it from there rather than re-requesting it each time over and over. But I didn't care for that optimization here. And finally, we can add our listener on the swap event of the pool. We do this by calling on on the pool contract and specifying swap. Now when an event is broadcast, these values are returned. And we'll pass a couple of these values to our square root to price function above, which will return a human readable price. And then we'll log the result, as well as the symbols in the pool and the sender who made the swap. Also, when adding pools, we'll log which pools are added. And if a pool fails to be added, it's probably because you hit a rate limit. So sleep for five seconds and then log that it failed. We'll also sleep for 100 milliseconds between every pool add and log complete when it's all finished so you know that it's not just hanging, trying to create a pool. I've run this in the console and now I'm waiting for swaps on Uniswap. We can see a few right here. The pool, the current price, and the wallet it came from. Let me know what else you want to learn in the comments. Like and subscribe if you're still watching and I'll see you next time.